All right, this is the beginning of what we would do for a microscope or a dissection for a worm. So here is a worm. I've just pulled it out of the bucket. Um, people always wonder what it smells like. It's been stored in 93% water. I'm reading this right off the label. Less than 4% formalin, 2% alcohol, and 1% acetic acid. So they do have a bit of a vinegary doctor's office kind of smell. Okay. The reason I am handling it is so that I can tell which side was the side it crawled with and which side was not. Okay, because you can feel the little bristles that they use, kind of like track spikes, only not that sharp, just to grab the soil while they were moving through. You can also see that one side's darker than the other. Okay, the darker side would be what we call the dorsal side easy to remember because D is dorsal and D is dark. Now this little structure here is called the clitellum and it is always closer to the head end. Everything of importance is from the clitellum forward. There's nothing new from here to the back. It's just one long intestine and one long vein. Okay and we can see that right there is the mouth opening. Okay, what looks like a nose is kind of a partial segment. Okay. Now, sometimes when they're in a bucket, because like these were, they get kind of twisted and kinked, and you can tell this guy does not want to lay straight. All right. So when we go to open him up, we'll have to. We won't be opening up that end anyway, but we'll need to make sure that we're laying him straight because he is a bit twisted here at the front. All right. Now, everyone gets all excited about dissection because they get to use sharp things and that kind of stuff, and they think they're all cool. The only sharp thing you're going to be using today is the scissors, which we are going to make some points about. Notice it has a pointy end and a blunt end. And they are built that way for a specific reason. The first time you go to make an incision, you do put the pointy end down. Once you've made an incision, especially on a larger animal like a rat, you flip it around. This way, as the cutting edge is underneath the tissue and going inside the animal, the um, blunt edge is not dragging and or stabbing things that you don't want stabbed. The pointy end is to make the first initial poke. After that, you flip it over. On a worm, we tend to keep the pointy end down, but just think lift up. Other things that we'll use will be these T-pins. You can see why they're called a T. We will use water because as the organism dries out, because it's been in preservative all the time, it will evaporate very quickly since it's small and um, dries out and it makes it easier to tear. We will also use probes. We have pointy ones. They're all pointy, I guess, but this one's bent and this one's straight. All right. So I'm about to cut into this thing. I know that this is the top, and you can see he's kind of a little twisted here because you can see how it gets dark, and that's not really the way he wants to lay. So I'm going to have to follow this line because that's actually the dorsal surface. And I'm going to start behind the clitellum. This way if I make a mistake and cut too deep I'm not damaging anything that we want to take notes on later. So I just poke in there and I just follow that line. I'm taking little little and I'm lifting up as I go and I'm trying to follow that line. This is so much easier to do holding it in your hand, I think. It could be my personal preference. A lot of dissection books will say to pin it down before you cut it, and I find that to be awkward, unless you've got a seriously skinny pair of scissors.
There we are. Now, you're pretty much done with the scissors unless you find a spot where you didn't cut it very well. And so now is where these come in very handy. All these segments have a little wall or a septum. And it's easiest just to go along the side of the skin. Notice how I'm separate. I'm pulling towards the skin, not towards the organs and body um, tissues that are inside. Okay, once you do that, you pin it at an angle. This is where your fine motor control skills come in handy. And notice I'm pinning at an angle so that we can see things when they're opened. And the reason I switched is because this one was wiggly and that wasn't helping me. Notice again, I'm coming along. And those of you that have butchered or gone hunting, this is a lot like cutting open the animal when you're skinning it. Only there's no blood. Oops, tore him a little bit, tore the skin. I did not quite get that cut the way I should have. Now be careful that you always know where your fingers are because these are surgical scissors. They will make no distinction between warm skin and people skin. When we get to the rat, they definitely don't make any distinction between rat and human. All right. That is how you open up an earthworm so that you are ready to understand all its parts and how it's put together.